Thank you for being here in another We Travel event. I am very excited to cover this topic. It was highly requested. And uh, thank you very much to everyone who are always sharing their feedback and ideas with us. And thank you very much, Andrea and the Therese and Tiger team. They are great website experts and they work specifically with tour operators. So um, they are going to share their knowledge with us and the best tips that you, you can hopefully apply in your businesses. And um, as we wait uh, a couple of minutes until everyone joins, I'm going to take this minutes to introduce myself. My name is Maria. I am part of the We Travel team. We are a booking and payment platform for travel companies and tour organizers from all of, around the world. And uh, if this is the first time that you are joining our We Travel event, we have been organizing uh, free workshops on different topics. We are always considering your opinion because we want to cover the topics that you find most important and most relevant right now. So if you would like to be notified on the next events that we are going to have, or if you want to give us ideas and leave us your feedback, please feel free to uh, follow us in our LinkedIn or join our Facebook community. I'm going to share the links in the chat so you can join the community. And uh, well, the topic for today is going to be how to increase your direct bookings website must have. And this is specifically for tour operators. And uh, just to put us in context, according to Focus Wire, um, travelers visit on average 18 websites across eight sessions on multiple devices before making the decision to book. So uh, you can have the most amazing tours and you can have like great guides and being following uh, all the safety protocols for safe travels right now. But you also have to um, consider your website as your most important marketing tool because once someone gets there, you don't want them to leave and look somewhere else. And that's why we have Therese and Tiger today. They are not only experts in uh, designing websites, but they are also tourism specialists. So the, they are going to explain to us how to make sure your website is causing a very good first impression, but is also keeping the attention of your potential customer until they finally book with you. So thank you very much, Andrea, again, for being with us. Andrea is the lead designer in Tourism Tiger, and she has amazing knowledge. So just in case, guys, uh, before starting, I'm going to explain that after the presentation, we are going to have a short Q&A session. So feel free to leave your questions and we are going to read them, read them at the end and answer all the questions that we can. So I think uh, we can start. Andrea, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can start the presentation. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much for that great introduction, uh, Maria. Um, I'm going to stop my screen so I can, I'm going to stop my video, sorry, so I can share my screen. Uh, just bear with me for a couple of seconds while I get it. Um, so I hope it's sharing now. Hopefully you can see it. Um, well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for a new session of uh, web uh, this webinar series for We Travel. Um, my name is Andrea Lopez. I go by Andy, and I am the lead designer at Tourism Tiger. Um, today, I will be sharing our best tips and tricks on increasing online and direct bookings throughout your website. Um, at Tourism Tiger, uh, we create alliances with tour and activity operators to produce effective, user-friendly, and nice-looking websites. Um, from the beginning of the project's conception, walking alongside people like you in every step of the website build process until launch, and then some more, um, by providing our clients with technical support, hosting services, monthly updates, small design changes, new pages per month, and assistance on maintaining websites fully functional and operative. And so you don't have to create a new website ever again. <laughs> 
And in times like these, we're, we're trying to survive a worldwide pandemic and its effects on our industry. Um, where according to Wikipedia, the United Nations World Tourism Organization has estimated the global international tourism arrivals have decreased or didn't decrease by 58% to 78% in 2020. That's crazy. And it's more important than ever to find ways to stay afloat within our businesses. And that means keeping control of your sales and your bookings and converting as many people as possible directly through your website. And I'm here to tell you the best news that you'll hear today. It doesn't have to be too complicated. <laughs> the major goal in web design is to make things easy for our users. That's the main thing. But our focus is to offer tools, apply simple tricks, and lead their journey into what we want to sell. What's that? Tours, experiences, activities, packages, holidays, all of that, correct? Today, I will walk you through my main tips and tricks that I've collected throughout my years of experience to increase those online bookings throughout your website. So we will be discussing responsive design. We will be talking about clarity, and this is a very big, important one. Um, so hope you take notes on that. Um, we're going to be talking a bit media content, social proof and credibility, and calls to action. All right, sound fun. Let's get started. In today's modern world, user experience is more important than ever. Because when we're creating products and experiences, our end user is and should be our main priority. We want, in this whole world wide web, we want them to remember us, to choose us and to book with us. And the only way to achieve that is to step out of our shoes and see things from their perspective. And according to Think with Google, 94% of leisure travelers switch between devices as they plan or book their trip. The old days where only the desktop experience mattered are entirely over. See, access to technology has completely changed how we live and interact with everyday life, including travel planning. And that is because mobile and tablet browsing has set the norm to make your websites adaptable to viewing on every single screen and every browser. And if the experience isn't up to our users' expectations, they'll just simply click back and they will go with another competitor whose website is responsive because it guarantees the complete functionality and usability of the websites. See, in fact, 88% of travelers with smartphones will switch to another, perhaps uh, another site or app if yours simply doesn't satisfy their needs. So you might be wondering, how, how can we prevent that from happening? So let me tell you, <laughs> when creating a website, the adaptability of the site to the different devices and browsers should be an important point to keep in mind while working on a website project. And maybe it's not the absolutely most important thing, but as a website should be ensured to perform and be enjoyed just as much as an experience that you'd have sitting in a good old fashioned laptop, like I am today. <laughs> So for a better mobile experience, I can recommend that the top menu, also known as burger menu, is located at the top right of the screen. Because this gives um, um, this, as you know, the majority of uh, population and users are right handed. So it just makes it easier for them to access this particular um, button. Also, long chunks of text can get really hard to keep track of while reading on smaller screens. So I recommend that they should be separated in shorter paragraphs, maybe using subtitles or accordions as frequently as possible to break up some of that long chunks of text. Um, also, text and images should always be separated elements, because if we put them together using an image editing software, maybe such as Canva, which is very popular, or Photoshop, the moment images have to adapt to the different screen sizes, believe me, most likely the text will become illegible. So, 
Um, when doing a web, if you're going with a web design agency, right, or if you're working with a freelancer, or even if you're doing it all by yourself, please remember to include responsive design into your final product. Because if you're going to design the mobile version first, make sure that the photo files are um, large enough so they also work for the bigger screens. Test and check on as many devices as you have in hand before it goes live. Um, at Tourism Tiger, we design our websites to adapt to any screen and browser from the smallest smartphone to your parents' desktop computer, Safari, Chrome, you name it. Just ensuring the user experience and journey isn't that much different from each other. Very important, right? Now we're going to talk about clarity and prep your pens and papers because hopefully you can take notes on this one. And as I always tell my clients and our clients at Tourism Tiger, our website is um, our online business card. It's an extension of our brand and it should be able to tell our visitors three big things. Who we are, what we do, and why they should book with us. In order to achieve this, we need to ensure our website is able to answer those three big questions. When visitors land on your website, what drives them into engaging and clicking or navigating further takes split in its split second. So these are the several things that you can put in place so you can catch their attention. You can put your message out there and invite them to browse through your website. So for example, we'll talk about clarity for the hero area, navigation, content, and um, most importantly, pricing. So when it comes to the hero area, is that top large screen that appears when you land on a website, right? It's typically a big image with text over it and some buttons. What makes a hero area successful is a combination of these elements that speak directly to your target audience. The image that you're showing on the hero area should be representative of where you're based what type of activity you're offering, and it would be even better if you can feature people enjoying the experience. Because the truth is visitors want to see themselves in these people, live in the experience, visiting the place. And while I understand, believe me, I do, it's hard to choose only one shot or one scenery, the benefit of choosing a representative image allows users to get an idea of where they, add, where they are online and whole vast web. Things like these tell our users who you are as a business and help them make a decision on why they want to go with you. So right here, um, let's stop here for a second and look at this website. Um, as you can see, the hero image is um, regular scenery, but it doesn't really tell me much about what the company offers, what type of activity I'll be seeing or experiencing. It just doesn't really tell much, just that it's a valley, perhaps um, you'll be doing something relating to wine. Through this, we don't know exactly what's happening in this. Um, but on the other hand, at Tourism Tiger, our aim is to select pictures or show pictures in the hero area that you can clearly see from a first glance, more or less where they're located. In this example, interlocking activities is located in Switzerland. So we wanted to feature some part of the mountains and the beautiful lakes that they have. And also having a person show them what the experience will be like and even having a smile. That tells users that this is a fun, safe, exhilarating experience. Um, and yeah, why not go with it, join, and yeah, why not book straight away? This is a type of impact that we want to make when it comes to the um, hero image that we want to choose. So now when it comes to the content for your main headline, introduce yourself to your website visitors as clearly as possible and make sure to include keywords describing what you do and where you're based as well as orientating your visitors, this will also improve your SEO ranking and it will help you get found in relevant searches. And for the sub headline, you can, add, you can add simple highlights like the things that make your business unique. That way visitors will have the key information to decide to browse your website and you'll have the opportunity to convert them into bookers, which is what we want. <laughs> so 
I recommend to stay away from uh, these phrases that are very vague, that don't really tell you that much of what's going on and what the experience is going to entail. Uh, and I would recommend that you include um, part of the wording in uh, the type of activity that you're offering, perhaps where you're located, which is really important. And one of two unique selling points that you can tell um, your visitors to convince them to go book with you. Like um, what we can see in Valo Libre, where uh, from the just my first glance, I can see that they do hang gliding in Valle de Bravo, Mexico, which is pretty much all the information I need to know if I'm looking for this type of tour in Valle de Bravo, Mexico. Um, so yeah, that's what we want to aim. But finally, when the website visitor comes uh, into your site, in order for them to feel compelled to move through your site and show interest, you must take them by the hand and tell them exactly what they can do while they're there. Whether that's to show them all the options you offer and just why not hint them to book now. You see, our studies have shown that 70% of people book on the not first, but second, third, fourth, or even fifth time they visit your website. So whether um, what we want to do is just we need to do our best to reduce that friction and be really clear on how to book or inquire once you land on the website. I think that's the most important thing. And this is crucial for your sales conversion. And don't take me wrong, I'm not trying to show this into, we're not trying to show this into visitors faces. But through this, the clarity is the key of it all. And the clearer we make the navigation, we allow and we allow easy access to the main actions our visitors should take, the more success you'll have on increasing those online sales. Whew, now <laughs> that the visitor has landed on your website, and what happens after is that after they're clear about what they want to do and we have their attention, they're going to start browsing, right? By applying the same principles of clarity that we've been discussing, we can allow the visitors to discover the information that they're looking for on your website easily and seamlessly. And during our time in the industry, we have identified two types of website visitors, page navigators and menu navigators. And if you don't guide them, page navigators will try to click every single thing they see on a page. So the importance of a very well laid out homepage is crucial for this type of visitor. If they keep scrolling down, it means that they haven't found what they're looking for. So ensure that the clickable elements on the page are clearly signposted. And this includes buttons or calls to action placement as well as the hyperlinks being marked differently for normal text. And finally, my personal trick is to place the contact us link at the very bottom of each page. If your visitors scrolled all the way down there and they didn't find what they wanted to know, give them the opportunity to contact you directly with their questions. You'll see the difference in the interaction and the conversion of your page navigator visitors. But on the other hand, we have the menu navigators. They will click exclusively and navigate using the links in the menu. So each option has to be really clear where that leads to. The top navigation on your website is key for engaging those visitors and leading them into the different pages of your sitemap. As with the page navigators, the main aim is to guide your visitors through your site as easily as possible. So what I suggested you do is arrange your menu options chronologically from left to right, thinking of the customer journey, starting with products you offer, right, followed by categories which may influence their decision of choosing you, such as information about your company, your blog if you have one, um, FAQs, that type of thing all the way through the right hand side where once their minds are made up, they can choose to either contact or book now. And using sub menus sorted by categories prevents the users from being overwhelmed by choice. Our general rule of thumb is a maximum of seven menu items. So take note of that. 
because the idea is to make the most common actions as easy to find as possible in a matter of seconds, which means hiding things away in an unclear menu structure will make the user experience more difficult and potentially it will turn menu navigators away. And we don't want that. <laughs> so once your website visitors have started navigating through your site because you've picked their interest and now it's really clear to get around, you will need to make sure that they can access the relevant information they're looking for. And this means that the content that you should be putting on your website needs to speak for you, importantly, but most importantly to your potential customers and the ideal target audience that you're catering to. Now, I have to admit I'm not a content expert, but when my boyfriend and I are looking for an activity that we want to do, we'll know that we'll want to learn about all those key aspects that will convince us that this product that we're being presented is the best choice for us, that they will tell us all the details and aspects that are key for us to consider when making that decision, and that they will give us a clear idea of the experience that we'll be living when we choose to book. For example, the main question that users will formulate in the, their heads is why should I book now? Just why? And we, as tour and activity operators, need to tell them exactly why. So highlight in easy to understand language what the experience will entail. You know, what is being offered, how much it costs, what time it starts, where it starts, how long is it? Is it for me? Can I do it? Is it suitable for me? You know, all those type of things. So whenever we're writing content and building a product page, we have to think like the tourist and we have to offer the information that we would want to know as tourists and then pull it out to make it easy to understand. So from my design perspective, you'll want to answer these questions in a non-intrusive way. And the best solution we've, we've found so far is to break it all down into short, easy to digest sections, including visual breaks such as photos, videos, using icons or bullet points and having a small FAQ section for one of the people that want to read every little thing. And while I know, I know it's hard to predict exactly which questions those future visitors will have, it is possible for us to be clear on the information that we offer and the language that we use to communicate it. And now, the last thing that needs to be really clear on our websites that will make the break that will be the make it or break it deal will be the price. And I know it's cliche, but I can tell you that it will be the major thing that will trigger the final decision on our potential customers to have all of your efforts um, and convert them into an actual online sale. And for that, in every product page, the price needs to be upfront and present as soon as you land on the page. Now, I know, I know I can almost hear you. Some of you may be asking yourselves right now, Andy, um, wh what if my products are above the market price or they tend to be expensive for the average customer? What if I can give an exact price? I would say not to worry. There's, there are different strategies that you can use to include pricing and make it easy and sensible enough for the different types of customers with as few clicks as possible. And I'm going to tell you a few examples, like the price can be placed along the conversion bottom wording, such as book now and then have the price, like in the example that we see book now 60 euros. Uh, we can also have prices that can be presented in an easy way to digest, um, like somewhat indicated in the description, like starting from da 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 or dun dun per day. And then lastly, um, the prices can be um, broken down into approximates or different um, itinerary examples so they don't have so people don't have to contact you and you can make it easier for them to cater to all their questions and like we established before when chances are they won't book the first time they visit your site visitors often land on your website with a rough budget in mind that will most likely evaluate their options they're going to do a little research and then finally 
they'll end up with the one tour or activity that most accommodates their schedule, their interests, and their budget. And this is a fact. So by making sure that your prices are easy to find, clear from a first glance, and presented in a broken down structure, you won't be wasting your time or your customer's times with ambiguous language about pricing that should most likely generate frustration and that would potentially lose, make you lose those online bookings. And we don't want that. So um, hope you took notes on those because that was clarity for you. Um, and another, now that we're moving on, another one of the main reasons that converts online lookers into bookers, wink, <laughs> has to do with the media content that we include in our websites. And the power that it has to interchange in people's minds is often underestimated. How many of you have been on a website or a social media profile and have stared at their photos and videos and just thought, wow, Wow, this is stunning. I want to be right here. This should be me. I know I have plenty of times in the past year. It's said that people remember up to 80% of what they see compared to only 20% of what they read. So paying attention to the visual content that you put up on your website is huge. And in the end, even if you follow all the tips and tricks that I've given you so far into increasing um, those online bookings, they would probably won't help you as much if the visual elements that you use on your website don't have that wow factor. N I mean, not for anything, people say a picture is worth a thousand words, correct? <laughs> so I think it all comes down to the image strategy that you use and its placement takes a big part of the strategy I recommend for tour and activity operators and the tourism industry. Visual content communicates rapidly and directly with the user. So it's important to highlight this type of element and place it smartly so it achieves its goal. By making sure that there is some visual content present always for each frame of the user's journey as they browse on your website, they will have the opportunity to tie what they've learned to a visual mental picture or a memory, which works in our favor whether that's a, an image gallery, a video section, you know, icons that go along with highlights or even logos for widely known companies. These all trigger a connection with the brain and the information that's being stored in by helping them include these references and make a decision. See, for example, if you've been paying attention to what I said early about the hero area image being a key shot to introduce yourself to your first website visitors, you know that the secret for selecting engaging visual content is to identify and include the following pointers always. First, what is to be experienced? You know, the destinations, the places that they'll be visiting, beautiful sceneries, the type of activity that they'll be doing, what is to be experienced? Then who is, exp is experiencing it? People having fun doing the experience. Ideally, they'd represent your target audience in the photos or the videos, not perfect looking models. Those don't work. This is extremely important as people want to see themselves or they want to see people like them live in the experience. And then um, also who's delivering it? You know, friendly staff, identifying factors such as perhaps branded t-shirts or uniforms, things that will give them a hint of what type of person they'll be hanging out with. So remember, you're not telling them how much of a great time they will have, you're showing them. So if you're wondering how many thousands you'll have to spend in order to achieve these results, I'm here to tell you, definitely not as many as you're thinking. In times like these where technology is accessible for everyone, the simplest smartphone nowadays will get you perfectly splendid visual content if you keep in mind these simple pointers. It needs to be authentic. And this means that again, awkward model poses definitely won't be a hit. The idea is to capture spontaneous moments, people having fun and really enjoying their time and group shots you can get away with. 
also, quality needs to be good to excellent. Again, this can be achieved with any entry level smartphone these days and a good comprehension of lining. Of course, obviously, professional cameras will give you great results. But I'd say it's not the end of the world if you don't hire a photographer. You see, the most important thing here is to make sure that the content isn't, isn't blurry or pixelated, you know, and that photos are taken in a landscape or horizontally view. That's, that's really all that is required. And also, very important, show the good weather. Everyone loves a beautiful sunny day. Shootings in natural daylight and blue skies will set the mood for inviting visual content that will speak to your audience. And the last but most important thing I want you to keep in mind when creating and selecting media content for your website is the smile factor. And according to, bear with me with these names, uh, Berg, Sutherland, and Lindstrom, <laughs> the smile is the dominant facial, facial expression on a human model in visual marketing. Why? Because it works. Smiling faces and ads elicit more consumer joy and greater product liking. It's like instant magic, I'm telling you. Smiles have power, they're contagious, and when you include smiles and, and people having a good time in your visual content, I swear to God, it's like dynamite. It spreads, it infects everyone that sees and engages with these type of content, which then results in great online bookings. So remember, a smile can go a long, long way. I'm already smiling just seeing at this photo of these kids. So, um, yep, just two secs. Uh -huh. There we go. So let's talk about social proofing and credibility. And let's say my boyfriend and I are about to go on a holiday to that beachy paradise that we've been dreaming about. It's time to plan. We're looking for accommodation. And if you're like me, you'll know um, you know that we'll research online, right? And we will compare several places, several prices. And finally, we have narrowed down to two options. They're both small, but cozy cabins at the seashore, like this picture. But the only difference is the amount of reviews people have left before. One doesn't have any reviews or ratings, while the other has many in several languages and by different groups of people. If you were us, which one would you choose? Hmm? Going for the one with the most comments adds up to the credibility of the place and the product being presented. And it's something that most people would do. Probably they'll go for it without even giving it a second thought. And that's not coincidence. It's a psychological phenomenon, phenomenon called social proof, which, in which people will follow the action of the masses. So the idea is that since there's so many other people that are behaving in a certain way. It must be the correct behavior. Hmm. Now, by the time being in this industry, um, I think we can all agree that that's not always true. But it is definitely a big factor that plays part into online sales and conversion through your website. And since we're interested in that, it is something that we have to make sure to include in order to convert as many visitors as possible. And in my experience, the placement of testimonials and reviews in our websites is crucial to tell our visitors not to only take our word for it, but actually see that we have real customers and that we're being endorsed by them. So ideally, this should go immediately below the presentation of our products on the homepage. Um, they can also go towards the bottom of the activity details in the product pages or for a better exposure in a sidebar or visible enough for the users to have access to at all times. And remember, please always link them to the original source. Nothing is more suspicious than website reviews that are anonymous or that there's no way to check if they're real. Now, I can almost read your mind. I know a lot of you are hesitant about OTAs like TripAdvisor, Aviator, or Yelp. And while it's hard to control what happens in the realms of their websites, you can use their endorsement and invite your customers to live their opinion about your business there. 
that then you can display on your website. It's a lot more credible for website visitors to have endorsement of big platforms like TripAdvisor or Google My Business and see that there's actually real people behind these opinions. And some of you may be asking right now, Andy, come on, what if I'm a new business? How can I show credibility and social proof if I hadn't had any customers yet or very few? Mm, I'd say again, no, not to worry, you're not alone. We've had lots of clients like you at Tourism Tiger. And while they don't get a lot of traffic in the first months, let's be honest, there are a few ways to show credibility with very little resources, such as being proactive on social media and interacting with your followers. For example, if you integrate your Instagram account feed into your website, that can quickly show that you're an established business and you're not going to ghost future customers. Also, linking TripAdvisor, Google, or Facebook isn't such a bad idea even when you have no reviews, especially your Google My Business profile if you're a new business. This can show enough credibility to tell website visitors that you're a serious enough business that is recognized as such an international platform. So take that into consideration. Also, encouraging your customers to leave you, you reviews never fails. You can maybe remind them to do so towards the end of your experience, or you can follow up after the activity um, with an automated email. So the point is to be appreciative of the time that they spend writing your review. Also, you can include on your website industry association logos, awards, certifications, qualifications if you have any, or even, even media representation like article mentions, uh, you know, published on well-renowned websites. Just like media content, I think the idea is to gain users trust by showing them that you're the real deal. That way you'll show your potential customers that you're serious about this, that you have real people that can buck you up and that you won't disappear with their money. You'll see how these tricks will give you more credibility online and they will most likely convert those visitors into customers. Ooh. Okay, last but not least, if you're with me still, let's talk about calls to action. CTAs, buttons across the website and how to place them strategically to convert your sales. And as we discussed on navigation, the clearer they are and the easier they are to find, the better it will be for conversion. And while 75% of people who actually make a booking on your website are at least second time visitors, the idea should be to make their journey enjoyable and easy as possible from the first visit. Now, there's a couple of go-tos I'd like to share with you, but for our most important buttons, which are the conversion buttons, such as book now, make an inquiry or contact those buttons, we want to keep in mind that no matter where these users end up, conversion buttons should never be out of sight. Either that's at the top of the hero area, like we mentioned, or one, um, on a sticky top menu or lower down on the page as the user scrolls down on a sidebar or even at the bottom of the screen for easier thumb access on mobile. I think the trick is to place them on all pages, very important, of your website, not only your product pages. Also, consistency is key, very important. And this goes for my fellow creative out there my fellow partners out there who just like to stay creative. When you reserve an eye-catching color combination just for the button, uh, for these type of buttons, it will become subconsciously automatic to know exactly where to click for users that have become familiar with them in a second, third web time visit, website visit. Um, because when there's styling consistency, when they can expect what to see, users can relax and they can focus on what we want them to do, which is book now, not be distracted with several types of colors just playing around. And another big thing that I wanted to mention, make sure that your booking software is as good as your website. Who hasn't been put off 
um, when clicking a book now button and then being taken to some mysterious website to put in your credit card details and just pray to God that everything is going to be fine. If we want to keep consistency to earn credibility and ensure our users best online experience, the booking software that you choose needs to be integrated directly into your site. That way, users won't have to leave your website. They will feel secure as this don't know domain chain, domain name change, sorry. And they will buy your tour activity without hesitation, which is an incredible win. As web designers, there's little that we can do on the booking software end. That's my personal thought. But the good news is that you, as tour activity operators, can choose to go with a software company like We Travel that is flexible, that has a ton of cool features to, uh, and tools to offer, that is reliable, and can integrate with your website seamlessly for the best conversion rates and online bookings. So there you have it. <laughs> it's been long, but um, how about we go through a little summary just to make sure that we have all of our notes and we learned um, everything today. So why don't we start with the first one, which is make sure that your website has a responsive design in mind. It's 2021 where accessibility to technology is key. A website that doesn't work on every platform is simply non-negotiable. Second, your website visitors should be your driving force and their user experience will define their conversion. So be clear when presenting your products and services. Also, the top area of your website is the first impression that you make on your website visitors. So introduce yourself clearly and you'll secure your visitors engagement. Four, it's all about making things easy for our customers, including your website's navigation. So answer all their questions in your page structure and present them a navigation that makes sense. Here we go on point five, include your content key information that will help visitors see why they should choose you. Remember, we're thinking about them and what they want to know before booking. And be proud of your prices. Show them strategically. Being vague about pricing will only drive them away. A picture is worth a thousand words, literally. Users want to see themselves in your visual content, enjoying the experience and having a good, good time. Don't be afraid to use other platforms to show credibility to your audience. Remember, people feel better when they can see there's real people saying nice things about your business. And lastly, secure your online bookings with a booking software like We Travel that can work from your website so users feel relaxed and make their, make their booking experience easy. Piece of cake. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll pass it off to uh, Maria. <laughs> Amazing presentation, Andrea. Thank you so much for all the information. I hope that you guys have been taking notes. I have been looking at the chat as well. It has been very active and we have lots of questions. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to read these questions one by one and um, we have a Q&A section just in case. So uh, for those of you who have, who have been leaving questions in the chat and having put them in the Q&A box, it's going to be better to have it, have them in that section so we don't miss anything. Um, so first of all, we are having a question about the hero area yes. that you were talking about in the beginning. So we have two questions actually. One is, um, Elena asked, do you recommend a video or an image for the hero area? Which one is better? Okay, um, cool. Um, so it, it's gonna depend on where you're based, but right now, um, I think the most important thing is to, to keep in mind internet connection. And um, obviously I think the video is gonna be more, it's gonna stand out more. 
Uh, it's going to be more inviting visually and you can show a lot more through video than through a single image. Um, so I would definitely recommend having a hero video area. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that what we do and what we try to encourage with um, to all of our clients at Tourism Tiger. Um, but I think the important thing is to keep in mind that it can't be that long if you're going to choose a video because that can interfere with the loading speed. And if a user comes in a website and see that it takes super long to load, they'll just simply walk away. Um, so just keeping in mind that it's a short, light video. Um, and yeah, and, and we also work with images for those um, that perhaps have a slower internet connection. So even though we have a video, there's also an image available for those that um, don't have such fast internet. Okay, awesome. And I think this also answers the question that Fernando asked. Uh, he was asking if using videos or images 360 uh, would be harmful. So I guess it depends on how long the video is, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's completely what's going to depend on it. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. Super clear. Then uh, we have a question from Gala Trails. Should the price be on the home page or in the second page? Um, yeah, that's one question because it has to actually. Okay, awesome. Well, first question, yes. I mean, um, it's going to depend on your price point. Um, I'm not a content expert, but we do advise if your price is competitive, we do advise to keep it on the homepage as well. Just very, um, so it doesn't take away like the entire thing. Um, so it's not, it doesn't steal all the attention, but if it's a competitive prize and you're proud of it and you want to show it, um, then definitely on a part where you kind of like expose your products and your, all of your offerings, it wouldn't hurt to add the price just at the top or have a little tab or section that says like, hey, this is our most popular option. It's only da da da, something like that. Okay, I'm perfect. And the other questions from him, it's about the page speed. He would like to know what's the minimum percentage that uh, he could look to make sure that his page is responding well. Okay. okay. Well, the ideal number is 100%, right? It will, it will always be. Um, but obviously, there's a couple of things that interfere in that to get to that 100 and also it's going to depend on which testing uh, testing site you use to get those um we do we recommend i think this is see this is very technical for my <laughs> for my side so i don't know much about it but i think google page speed is the one that we use and um what we do to keep it the lightest and that fastest loading is just make sure that all the images are compressed, that hopefully they're in um, they're in a web format, uh, such as WebP or uh, JPEG that is really, really light. And also, I think one of the other things is including such uh, complex things as JavaScript and all that complex code does impact the loading speed of the sites. Um, but that's pretty much all I know. That's for a tiger Kurt. That's a tiger Kurt question. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Um, all right. And then we have this question. If our primary goal is for a website viewer to go to a product page, what is your recommendation on the maximum number of clicks to get to that page? Okay, fair enough. Um, I would say no more than three clicks, just because when we're, um, you know, um, kind of like structuring our menu and our navigation, ideally we'll have tours, then we'll have the category, and then we'll have the tour. Um, so I, I wouldn't say more than three clicks. After three clicks, I think it's too much. And that's why we also advise for those return visitors, as we said, um, book now buttons on pretty much all the pages. Um, and so either that's the you know top menu or uh, perhaps there's a floating button uh, on mobile that can you know uh, lead you straight into the booking um, cart or the booking process. So um, it's always available for the customer with the less few clicks as possible. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. Um, all right, then we have um, this is from Jenny. She would like to know 
uh, how she could put her itineraries. If she has like long itineraries, she should she put like the information like day by day, or what would be the best way to display long itineraries? Absolutely. We had the opportunity to work a little while ago with a tour company called MyCat Tours, and they offer tours of up to 20 days um, in whole Vietnam and its surroundings. And um, I think the best way to do that is to break it up into little sections and have like different type of, of information in a well-structured way. Like, for example, you can have a little bit of an overview and then kind of like highlights you can have um, the main things that you will do on this day. And then the use of accordions is really important as well. The accordions are, are that kind of like type of uh, tab that hides the very long information. Obviously, we don't want to hide information, but we don't want to hide information that isn't crucial or that is going to affect the 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 decision to book. So all that information about the full itinerary of like where exactly they're going to go on each step or leg of the tour, then that can be hidden away into accordions. And we can also use several accordions, for example, um, day one, and then click here to learn more. And then you have all the information that you can ha uh, easily, you know, um, expand or, you know, com compress uh, uh, as easier to, to ease up that um, access and to just not be overwhelming visually. I think that's really important. Um, I also recommend the use of sticky tabs, which are those kind of like tabs that will d direct you into, it's like a second navigation and will directly, directly, you sorry <laughs> specifically to those sections in particular so we use them a lot for the product pages where we would call trip details and then they go exactly to the main trip details of the tour and overview and then they go to the overview section and they would go frequently asked questions and then they will go to that part and that will ease up the navigation so users don't have to scroll so much in order to get the info that they're looking for perfect but yeah mm-hmm Awesome information. And well, so many, so many questions, guys. I hope, Andrea, that you have like 10 more minutes. But I do. <laughs> Very good questions. Um, so Tim West, he is asking, so you showed the image of two elephants as a bad image um, wording for that side. What exactly would you replace it with for that particular site? Right, exactly. I think what I was trying to focus on that one was the type of phrasing because we were talking about content. Mm -hmm. And if I recall correctly, the image said something like adventure is out there, like just step into your toes and you'll see what you can find. To me, that's very vague content that is just not effective and it shouldn't be what you use for the H1 and H2, which are the main headlines that you have for your website, which also work for SEO and ranking in the searches. So it's really crucial to be descriptive in that type of, um, in that space in particular. I think the elephants, I mean, if you're, if, uh, let's see. If the content would say, or if the headline would have said like, amazing custom made safaris in Uganda. I mean, that that would have fit better with the image of the elephants than just adventure is out there. Like, what does that tell you, you know? That's what I was aiming for with that example. Sorry if I, if I wasn't clear enough. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And thanks for clar clarifying that. Um, just a few comments. Uh, we have been receiving a lot of um, thank you notes in the chat. Uh, and uh, well, I'm saying hi to people from all over the world because they have been writing us from the United States, Ecuador, Nepal. So it's amazing to have wow. you uh, from so many different countries. And uh, we are going to the next question. Uh, what is the cost? This is about a specific, uh, it's about tourism tiger specifically. Uh, just in case we are going to share also more information about tourism tiger, if you want to contact them, they have amazing content out there. And, um, but now uh, Megan and Stephen asked, 
what is the cost and timeline for Tracing Tiger to build a new website for an exciting company, an existing company? Uh, this is question one. She actually has three, so let's go with that one first. Amazing. Um, well, the prices really vary because that's going to depend on, I think that's going to depend on the amount of tours that you offer, the different, you know, factors and conditions of your existing business. Um, honestly, that's not my forte, <laughs> but if you want to contact our sales team, they would be so happy to schedule a call with you and try to work out what would be, um, you know, the best pricing for you and the best package that we can offer. Um, they're pretty friendly. So uh, you should reach out at sales at tourismtiger.com. Awesome. And yeah. then two, does Teresa and Tiger do an analysis of your current site? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, in order to present a proposal for um, the new website build, we do go in a little bit on your website and we highlight like the things that we think are working and the things that are not. Um, so we would do kind of like a little, you know, swipe just to make sure that what is working, what isn't, and just like create new proposals based on that um, kind of like little audit or little, you know, going through of the website. Yeah. Perfect. And her third question is, would you say less is more in terms of content? Mm, I think it's going to depend on the type of customer or target audience that you have. Um, we have had different clients that aim for less is more. But we've also had clients that are like, for example, we have a client that is called Inside Cities. And um, their main aim or their type of tour is directly aimed at, uh, you know, very knowledgeable people, people that are like professors, PhDs, uh, you know, like they're very like dedicated to this type of, uh, of customer and their descriptions are like they use words that I don't even know that I've never heard in my life. Um, and their content, content is quite extensive, but I don't think that's a bad thing as long as you're catering to the type of customer that you're aiming to, to sell. I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind your target audience. Okay, amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we have a question from Tim. Uh, since it has been proven that using image sliders in a hero section actually reduces conversions, do you think that videos are really that different from sliders? So we talked a lot about hero sections. It seems yeah. like it's a very uh, important topic as well. So we can um, yeah. maybe we can answer that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the main difference, and I think why we lean towards videos rather than image sliders, is because the video is one single file. And obviously, that's going to depend on, like we mentioned before, the the it, whether it's a large or long video or not. Um, but the image sliders are in fact actually, in, in actually, ah, in fact, <laughs> are different images that have to load each one of them. And because the hero areas is such a long area, the typical mistake that people make is that they add these photos to be very large and very like heavy. They don't compress them. Um, so it ends up demanding more from the internet connection to load each individual image to make it a slider than actually showing that video from the start. So that's the reason why we lean towards videos. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Then we have a question, which is actually more like a comment from Carl. Uh, he says the new Google Web Vitals come up in June. So we have to stay awake to have a web for mobile use. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And uh, he says like only less than 40% go to um, are going to use desktops. Maybe you have some comments about that because that's super important. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I said, when we're working with, um, when you're working with Tourism Tiger and our way to go is to always focus on the different adaptability of our website. So even though we would build on X platform, we will always try to ensure that the website uh, performs its best on every single device and every single platform. And we have been preparing for that uh, since January. It's been on the talks, it's been with the developers and we are, um, 
um, you know, working tirely, tirelessly to make sure that um, we're up to date with that main, um, that big Google, you know, change and whatever they're planning to, you know, keep their, the websites up to date. So definitely on it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then we have a question from Olindo. How many photos do you recommend to put in the gallery uh, tour? That's a great question um, because I can see how having a lot of images might be tempting, especially if it's a long, you know, like a multi-day tour or multi-day um, experience. I'd say for the sake of loading and like not reducing the loading speed of your, your page or your website, uh, I would suggest up to 15 to 20 max. I would say is the ideal number because other when you add more than that it becomes really um, overwhelming and it might bore even though your photos might be amazing it might just um, be overwhelming for the user just to keep like infinitely going through images and and you know mm. so yeah that's what I'd say 20 20 you know 15 that's what I go with awesome awesome mm -hmm. and then uh, we have a question from Cheryl. Uh, this is for both of us. <laughs> it says, we travel and tourism tiger can set up, maintain, and are compatible for a travel selling website. Well, we are two different services, so maybe you can explain and then I can explain my part, like briefly. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, absolutely. So what we do at Tourism Tiger is that we work with different uh, booking softwares and make sure that, like I mentioned during the webinar, um, the integration is as seamless as possible uh, and that the aim is to the users to never leave the website so that um, they can feel compelled to book and feel safe in the throughout the whole booking experience. Um, and yeah, definitely. I mean, we do, like I mentioned at the beginning, we do offer a service uh, that happens after launch, after you sign up with us. And uh, we offer what is called a Tiger Care service. And we offer monthly updates, new pages per month, small design changes, all that uh, with the aim to maintain your website um, up to date and uh, just up with the latest, you know, trends and, and, um, and recommendations uh, of today's demands from websites yeah yeah perfect and uh, following the second part of the question uh we travel is a booking and payment platform for travel companies uh, we have different tools that you can use depending on the type of tours that you sell maybe you are selling day tours or multi-day tours and you want to put book now buttons in your website or maybe you want to uh create tailor-made itineraries and you want a platform that can display your itineraries in a nice way um we also process the payments of your travelers from around the world and we have different tools so you can manage your trips better so of course if you would like to ask for more information we will be happy to um explain you more uh, i'm going to share our uh, linkedin profile and our facebook group page so in case you want to throw us a message as well so thanks cheryl for your question next question we have so many oh my god um but we are almost done okay uh just in case i'm going to answer a bunch of questions there there have been a lot of people asking if we are going to send a recording we are going to send a recording it's going to be sent in a couple of days and uh, it's going to be with the presentation and also uh with all the resources that Teresa and tiger has shared so it's going to be like a great recap and summary if you would like to watch it again take take more notes or share it with your teams. There have been people that are telling me that they found the information amazingly valuable and they are trying to take so many notes that they can keep up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no worries. We are definitely going to um, share the recording. So uh, we are done with these questions. Uh, okay, so um, then we are asked, Glenn is asking, do we need people to sign waivers to use them in a picture? Um, I'm not, I'm sure. not <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, Glenn, if you would like to uh, type the question again, like, because I'm, I'm 
I'm not that clear on what what she meant. Okay, next question, just in case. Um, what is the best that I can do so my video in the home page doesn't freeze every time I move to another page? Yes. Very, very good. I think that's a clear sign that either the video is super long or is uh, not compressed to use in a website format. Um, I would recommend that the videos that we use in the hero area are no longer that 15 to I'd say max 30 seconds. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but trust me, there's a lot that you can show during that time. Um, and also using like even online tools such as like Convertio or compress videos online, you can you can just use that type of video, um, sorry, uh, of pages that are just out there for, for, for people to use either paid or free services and compress as much as, as much as you can those files. So when they load and um, they just load as fast as possible and they don't freeze up as you move around. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we have, um, uh, well, actually Andrea has just shared uh, about the last question that we had about the permissions. I think uh, she was meaning about permissions for photos. Do so you need participant permission? Yes, and this is a very good question that we sometimes get the type of client that will just go into Google and just steal images from Google search. Um, that's not ideal because the eventually the authors from these photos can come to you if you're not crediting them they can come to you and ask for the photos to be taken down so i think the best thing that you could do is just use if you don't have the photos and you really need to use them you can just go to free common photo um places like unsplash or pexels.com and you can use them and Obviously, the idea is to to credit the author. So even if you're uploading a photo, perhaps in a gallery, to use the captions to perhaps credit the author of the photo, that would be great. But we do uh, encourage um, our clients and our tour operators that come in Tourism Tiger to take their own photos um, because I, I think they're not going to be as impactful if they're not exactly what they offer and what the product really shows or goes around. Like as much as you can find New York City photos, um, there's so much that you can you know, show for your very specific type of tour or the very specific type of um you know, visitor or audience that you want to show in your photos. So, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. We have one of the last questions is, um, we run yoga retreats alongside yoga classes. Amazing. Uh, where's the best place to share retreat advertisement on the website when it's our second priority? Would a slider on the hero area be best? Um. I wouldn't say so, uh, just because we don't want to overwhelm with um, a lot of different options right at the beginning. Like we want to be really clear and we want to show, you know, what's best uh, and what we really want to push uh, forward to uh, our customers and our target audience. So I would definitely add it to the homepage, but uh, perhaps it can be added as a wording or like a little phrase to the content of the hero area or perhaps lower down as its own section um, in the hero and the, sorry, in the, in the, the homepage <laughs> um, where you can describe the, you know, the type of retreats that you do. Um, I can think of an example um, that we work with. It's called Get in the Wild. Um, they do offer a lot of different options, a lot of different categories of tours, but they also offer yoga retreats and they have like their own sections as we go along the page, just to make sure that we can cater to all the different audiences, not just one particular um, zone or, or type of audience, but you know, cater for all of them. And we can use the ranking to, you know, um, and the hierarchy to, to highlight what we want to 
sell first versus what we want to give less priority to. Okay, that's great. Um, and uh, okay, so this one is answered. And then um, Megan is asking how long it would take to for a tourist in Tiger to redesign a website. I guess it depends. Maybe you can. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's going to depend on because what we like to do at Tourist and Tiger, um, obviously, we want to say we're the experts and we know exactly what we're doing, but we also need the collaboration from the client as well. Oftentimes we would um, send clients deadlines and we need their clients cooperation um, because we might know, know certain things or certain uh, specifics from the field that they're doing their tours or activities on. Um, I would want to say from two to three months would be uh, an ideal uh, timeline, but obviously we can meet to reach people's um, uh, you know, urgency, uh, we can just talk it out, see what we can do. We've done websites in one month, depending on, you know, the type of, 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 of the amount of pages that we've done, but we also, we've also taken longer, you know, to create that specific product. It's going to depend on the client. It's going to depend on the, and several factors. Um, uh, yeah, it's just going to depend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, perfect. So thank you to all of you who have been asking so many great questions. I see that people have been very attentive to all the information. So hopefully they are walking away with uh, the best tips to implement in their sites. Lots of people have been asking about um, if we are sending the recording again, we are going to do it. And uh, I am also uh, sharing with you the social media so you can follow Teresa and Tiger in their Facebook and Instagram and follow their blog. This is something that I'm going to share as well with the email where we are going to send a recording, uh, but leaving it in the chat as well. And uh, Andrea, thank you so much. This has been an amazing presentation. Uh, it has been super clear. And uh, I think that you have also answered very well all the questions that our attendees had. And uh, and yeah, so thank yeah. you very much. For thank you for your having me. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I hope to see you very soon. And to all of you who have stayed until the very end, Thank you as well. And I really hope that you enjoyed this webinar and thank you for all the nice comments that you have been leaving in the chat as well. Yes. So thank you have much. a great day, everyone. We are sending you uh, a small um, feedback form so you can so we can get your ideas for future webinars and please leave us your comments to see how you liked it. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And all of you have a great day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks Bye -bye. for joining. <laughs>